Hello, welcome to Zion Spees, our virtual worship service on Zoom and recorded on July 4. So I hope that you're enjoying the celebration of Independence Day and all the meaning that that has uh, for us as a country and for a people. I'm Pastor Rebecca Knox. It's a pleasure to be with you today. We start our worship with My Hope is Built on Nothing less. And we remember we are prisoners of hope. Our hope is built on nothing less. Thank you to the Island Sing for that. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The light of Christ is in our midst. 
we journey and talk together through the unknown of stay-at-home orders and invisible COVID-19, in addition to the realities of racism and thunderstorms, plus our regular life cares and challenges. A little more than usual, we are reminded that the Lord is in the same yoke to walk alongside of us and to teach us all in the divine name. We are prisoners of hope. Let us confess our sins together. Save us, O oh God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the machinations of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action, from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O oh God, from expecting siblings of color to continue to bear this emotional work which is ours to do together. Grant us wisdom. Grant us courage for the facing of these days. By the power of the Spirit, all for the sake of the kingdom that we share in Christ Jesus. Amen. And a word of forgiveness from Romans 5. While we were still weak, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, forgiving us all our sin, blessing us, sending us, and setting us free so that we might bring healing and freedom in his holy name. To that we say, thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our mini message today is based on Romans chapter 7, verse 15. You might be familiar with the uh, concept of having an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. So, have you guys ever been in this situation? My dog thinks about it every now and then. The angel dog says, scratch on the door to get let out. The devil dog says, just pee on the rug. Did you ever do something that you knew you should not do? I do even when I know that I shouldn't. Sometimes it's sneaking a snack when I'm trying to lose weight. Sometimes it's bigger. Sometimes it's being mean to people around me when I'm grouchy. Sounds like you've had some experience with that too. And you know what? God still loves us. And God encourages us to forgive one another and to do better next time in our choices, to try and learn from our decisions. And God welcomes us as his children. God forgives us. God guides us to do the right and the good choices. And God loves us and puts us first. And so we also put God first in life. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your guidance. Sometimes we listen and sometimes we don't. So please help us when we make mistakes. Help us to face the consequences. Help us to ask for forgiveness and to reconcile with one another. God, please continue to help us make good choices and to follow you. Amen. And God welcomes us all. Our reading from the Old Testament today is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout out loud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The king will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope, Today, I declare that I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is from Psalm 145. The words are familiar, so please listen with fresh ears. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all and your compassion is over all your works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. 
They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. May we hear these words of healing and compassion at a time when healing, compassion, and empathy are so needed. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 7. I do not understand my own actions, St. Paul writes, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my physical body another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my body. Wretched man that I am, St. Paul writes, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, the one who rescues us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. However and wherever we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel is according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal the Father. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest, Jesus says. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The sermon is based on Zechariah chapter 9, Matthew 11, and a little bit from 2 Corinthians 4. A quote from Omid Safi. As Desmond Tutu says, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. For hope to exist, there has to be darkness. For hope to be real, there has to be a prison, and we in the prison. There's a difference between being a prisoner of hope and being a prisoner of optimism. I am optimistic that we can meet together outside this summer. I am optimistic that a better day is coming in terms of poverty, politics, and spirituality. Despite this optimism, the last weeks 
have been awful. We have endured death, division, and disasters. Optimism is sometimes superficial. It takes all the pain and suffering and like the moose in the little cartoon that I sent you on email, it paints a thin bright line around any dark cloud, a pretend silver lining, like someone faking a smile to make others more at ease, while the truth is that there is a ton of hurt, anger, or pain inside. Times like this demand more than a thin painted line. Times like this demand more than a fake smile or a platitude like everything's going to be okay. Really, tell Zechariah's neighbors who have been starved out of their walled city of Jerusalem, which was then reduced to rubble before they were marched on their own trail of tears hundreds of miles into slavery and servitude, which lasted decades. Everything's going to be okay? No, it is not. There is darkness of the soul. There are times when it feels like there is no way through and no way out. There are times when we feel helpless and imprisoned. This is where we start, at the bottom, with nothing. Well, almost nothing. We have breath. We are still alive. Maybe only a little. Maybe it's hard to breathe. Maybe we are grieving those who are no longer living and breathing beside us. And yet, we are alive. Here is hope. Not optimism with its peppy cheers and measured by outcomes. Hope begins in prison, in prisoners, in the dark. Hope ignites when the outcome is still undetermined and unpromised. Hope starts with a recognition deep within life, sometimes most clearly felt when the emotional or the physical pain is intense. Like a seed buried in the darkness of well-fertilized soil, there is stirring a moment of breaking that protective shell covering, a vulnerable little shoot striving through the darkness toward the warmth of the sun, and a counterbalance, a tiny tendril yearning for moisture, anchoring this hope, still in darkness, still a prisoner, yet living, striving, yearning to be. Here we are on Independence Day weekend, living in a country which has sometimes been the prisoner and sometimes been the oppressor celebrating liberation from darkness, and other times incarcerating people of disproportionate economics and ethnicities into darkness. On Independence Day, we celebrate sacrifice. We celebrate determination. We celebrate resilience. We celebrate this drive born of hope by prisoners, while recognizing that much more independence is still to be fought for. Freedom and justice for all is still a battle cry. As Desmond Tutu said, it is only in darkness that we can see the stars. We are prisoners of hope. Aaron Sanchez writes in Sojourners magazine, hope is a desire for something, a want of an expectation. It retains an air of uncertainty which requires a modicum of faith. In the midst of apartheid in South Africa, Archbishop Desmond Tutu was not optimistic about the possibility of change. He was confined by the circumstances of his time and place. He was enclosed in a system of racial politics and racial discipline. He experienced despair and discouragement. Optimism was too unsteady to depend upon, so he pressed on as a self-proclaimed prisoner of hope. His despair was constrained by a faith that humanity does have capacity for goodness, even without a mountain of evidence about that goodness. Desmond Tutu had a small hope that people can be moved and can then be moved to change. Adding to this reality today is a promise from Jesus, yoked together with us for the long haul. The one who has been to hell and back, Jesus Christ, the one who has taken on our sin, the one who forgives us for the things we do wrong, even when we know they're wrong and we do not want to do them. That one is yoked together with us. As prisoners of hope, we are not alone. As prisoners of hope, we are taught and guided by the Holy One, humble and honed in on the way. We are not halted. As it says in 2 Corinthians, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, 
always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. So, prisoners of hope, yoked to Christ himself. One more piece of information. And that is when someone who is innocent is exonerated, restitution is double. Did you notice that happened in Zechariah? That the restitution is double? That the one who was forgiven was innocent and yet still a prisoner of hope? There are many who are innocent who still need justice. There are many who still need restitution. There are many who are still doing what we don't want to do, even as St. Paul had done. And there are many of us this Independence Day weekend who have a strong desire to be that prisoner of hope. There are many of us yoked together with Jesus Christ. And you know what we're going to do with Christ in the lead? We are going to go out and serve our neighbors with liberty and justice for all. We are going to sing glory, glory, hallelujah, praise God, y'all, as we wear this yoke. We are going to proclaim the living truth is marching on. Why? Because we are prisoners of hope. No matter what life brings, we are yoked together with Christ, with one another. And we're not done yet. His truth is marching on. And we are his witnesses. So stick with him as we stick together and help one another in our Christian walk. Amen. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are scored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling caps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of all before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him, be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. His truth is marching on. Please join me as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All are welcome at the altar as we gather and bring our thanks, our praise, and our prayers. We thank God in the midst of fear and struggle that Christ brings us through as witnesses of grace, as prisoners of hope. God gives us diverse languages, ethnicity, culture, and backgrounds, and we are unified, not uniform. God walks with and leads us, yoked together. For all this, we give thanks. Please join me as we lift our hearts to God, our stronghold, for all the needs of the world. We respond to each petition with the phrase, in mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the church around the globe where Christians are assembling for worship. Protect each from viral infection. Where Christians are worshiping with print and screen, grant them steadfastness in your word. Strengthen those believers who doubt your goodness. Bless pastors, deacons, and committee members as they strive to serve our congregations in this difficult time. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. Grant renewal to the air, the waters, and the lands. Save the animals whose natural habitat is threatened by climate change or human carelessness. And direct us toward sustainable living. Preserve the fields of Kenya from locusts. Nourish our country's green spaces. We pray for the nations. Keep the world from war. Pave the way for just elections. Protect citizens from the designs of autocratic rulers. Uphold our courts. Guide our national and state governments in finding ways to redress the wrongs of racism and to ensure equality for all. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. Let us pray for all who are oppressed or enslaved or poverty-stricken. Let us pray and work for an end to sexism, ageism, classism, and racism. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, all preparing for surgery and those healing from surgery, including Bill, Ken, Hong, those who would like to remain known only to you. Console the fearful, feed the hungry, house the homeless, shelter the runaways, guide us in that same yoke that we may participate and heal the many who are newly afflicted with the coronavirus. Guide researchers, Lord, in discovering a vaccine and visit the sick whom we name here, those in hospitals, and institutionalized patients, including Elizabeth, Chuck, Anna, and Claire. For those who have COVID-19 and their families, for their healing, especially for Mick, Chloe and her family, for Rob. We pray for those with chronic conditions that you'd bring wholeness to Bob, Darlin, Pat, Dorothy, Barbara, Mike, Linda, Jim, Brian. We pray for Kathy, Nick, Kristen, Elaine, Teresa, Bob, Shirley, Sandy, Robert, Susan and her family, for Rhonda, Sophia, Joe, Naomi, Duke, Jay, Ken, Bob, Matthew, Teresa, Carol, Marsha Rose, Doris, Joel, Carol, Ann, Greg. Hear us, O oh God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. We pray for infants and young children, that they be carefully tended. We pray for teens, that they keep patience throughout the contagion. We pray for school boards that they find solutions for the fall semester. We pray for the unemployed that they find jobs, for the underemployed that
that temporarily laid off, including Bonnie, Darlene, and Sandy. We pray for medical workers, that they remain healthy. We pray for the aged, especially those in care facilities, that they find companionship in your presence. Pray for Betty, Lester, Richard, Michael, Sharon, Pearl, Leon, Betty, William, Grace, for Dr. AJ, Tammy. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. Let us pray for military, including Dorothy's family, Lily, and Dominic, who just deployed this week. We pray for Paul's grandson, who was also deployed this week. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith, especially the martyr Jan Hus and the monk Benedict of Nursa. Comfort all who mourn their dead, even as you welcome these into your arms in your heavenly kingdom. We thank you for welcoming Paul, Joyce, Shirley, Harry, Donald, Bob, Jaden, Brennan, Arlene, Betsy, Betty, Rich, Donald, Kathy and Mark's mom, Mary Jane. And Lord, we pray for all who grieve, all who mourn, all who miss these and other loved ones. Please bring compassion, comfort, and condolence. Lead us in that yoke to be there as well. And at the end, bring us and all your people into your eternal rest. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. Receive our thanks, Lord, that we continue to be a family of faith, even as we're under different roofs. We thank you that Tina has married Josh and Samantha has married Nate. We celebrate with anticipation and joy the upcoming marriages of Tanya and Matt, of Nick and Adrian, who just got engaged last week. We thank you for Diana and her graduation, for Christine's upcoming birth, for the healing of Catherine, and for the sometimes painful process of ongoing healing from racism, from surgeries, from injustice, from emotional, spiritual, and physical wounds, especially here at the close of Pride Month. We recognize all the strides that have been made for, by our LGBTQIA brothers and sisters and all that need to still happen. We thank you, Lord, for the unconditional love of animals that live among us, especially for Lady, a puppy now living with Kathy and Roger. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. We pray finally for ourselves. Show us that the yoke of faith is easy. May we find our rest in you. Hear now our private petitions. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. Receive our praise. Receive these prayers, O oh God, for the sake of him who bore the heavy yoke for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. It's Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal 611.
The Holy One sends us, God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you all now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. To that together we say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God welcomes us into the week. So we thank God for guiding us and being in that yoke with us. Remember, next week we have a worship service combined with Science Bees ER in the Grove. It says a drive-in service on July 12th. Worship is at 1030, not at our normal worship time. There will be communion. Uh, but there is no picnic. So do bring a long chair if you'd like to sit outside of your car or you can stay in your car. Uh, there is not Zoom. We don't have the ability um, to get on the internet from the Grove, but Zoom worship resumes the following week, July 19, and will continue um, for a long time to come. So may God continue to bless you and keep you this day. Thanks for being with us.